when they talk about Sweden and mention what they think about. They think of ABBA's music, they think of Volvo's cars, and they think of IKEA furniture. Hi, I'm Michael Moynihan with Reason TV, and today we're talking to Swedish author Johan Norberg, author of In Defense of Global Capitalism, and a senior fellow at the Cato Institute. Johan, we want to talk about Sweden today, and uh, let's, let's just begin with uh, uh, the misperceptions about Sweden. Uh, Polly Toynbee from the left-wing newspaper in England, The Guardian, said Sweden is the most successful society that the world has ever known. Uh, you, I suspect, disagree with that. Can you tell us why that that's wrong? The problem is that this is a, an, an ancient leftist myth about this uh, utopian paradise of, of Sweden where all the social problems have been solved and it's possible to have high growth even though we have high taxes. To understand the Swedish model of, of taxation and so on, you also have to understand that it's really not a way of taking from the rich and giving to the poor, which is the uh, perspective or the hope of many American and European intellectuals when they look at the uh, tax levels in Sweden. Because if you try to tax uh, people with high incomes, big businesses, uh, uh, capital gains, businesses and so on, then you destroy the economy and the social democrats they understand that so what they do instead is that they have, they have fairly okay tax levels when, it, when if you're really wealthy if you're really rich what you, we do instead is that we tax consumption we have a 25 percent VAT consumption tax in Sweden which means that the poor pays they pay the highest proportion of that what they always fail to realize is that um, we created wealth when Sweden was a free trade, free market society. Uh, what has happened since is that Sweden has become a mixed economy where uh, with some free markets and some government intrusion you can easily see that uh, the free market parts, they're successful. But at the same time we could see things like Sweden being one of the healthiest uh, populations on the planet uh, had the highest sick leave uh, statistics in Europe because it paid off not to be there uh, and for lack of social control and no specific controls of, of that well if you can get 80 percent of your wage when you stay at home then you probably do that and voters re rejected that because after a while I mean there's a tipping point somewhere after a while you begin to see that look everybody else is sort of using these benefits and not contributing to society if that continues I'm a loser if I work so this has to stop somewhere and that's why the social Democrats were, were uh, thrown out of office. Let's talk about uh, uh, market reforms in Sweden. Explain for us you know, some of these sort of more market liberal or libertarian advances that Sweden has made over the past 15 years or 20 years. Well, yeah, to be fair, Sweden is one of the European countries that have liberalized the most, I would say, in the last 20 or so years, and especially if you compare it to the European continent. Uh, one of the reasons was that we had a... An, it, very problematic destructive economic crisis in the early 1990s because the old policies really failed and education didn't pay off, businesses uh, weren't doing quite well. So we had a center-right government, they began to really liberalize product markets. At that time um, the Social Democrats said that deregulating telecom, which almost no country had done before, was a weird libertarian neoliberal experiment that would destroy the telephone business in Sweden. And of course it paved the way for Ericsson and Tele2, the Swedish success when it comes to cell phones and, and so on. When we looked in at the turn of the century at the 50 largest Swedish companies, not one had been created after 1970. I mean, these are the old companies that were produced in, during Sweden's laissez-faire period, when Sweden was the most, most open to uh, businesses, and then they've been kept in place. Let's talk a bit about health care. What would you tell uh, an American who knew very little about the uh, Swedish health care system? Well, f first of all, I would uh, um, really look at the broader picture. Where does the health care technologies come from that the Swedish hospitals use? Where do the drugs and the medicines come from? Well, all of it is really invented, implemented in the American competitive health care system. 
So in effect, what we're doing is that we're, we're free riding on the entrepreneurship that goes on, on the, in, in the competition that goes on in the American healthcare system. So whatever you do, and whatever the consequences for Americans, I'm not the one to, to uh, really have an, a strong opinion on that. Please, please, please don't introduce any sort of single payer or uh, government mandated healthcare system here, because in that case, it would be disastrous for all the rest of us who parasite upon, upon the invention that goes on here. You have to somehow ration healthcare. The demand is unlimited. The resources are limited. So either you have to ration it with prices and making sure that people pay for it themselves and think about what they want to have covered, or you ration it with waiting lines. I mean, if you have a, a condition in Sweden, it could be serious conditions. We have stories about that in the media all the time. People have brain tumor and get the response that, yeah, just wait in line until we have the machinery and the doctors ready for you. Thanks for joining us, Johan.